combined experience in real estate law. The banks have lawyers, and so should you. The lawyers at Bilu and Bilu can help you modify your loan or apply for a short sale while they defend your case in court. Contact the lawyers at Bilu and Bilu today so you can sleep easy tonight. Your home is your castle. Trust the professionals at Bilu and Bilu to defend it for you. The law office of Bilu and Bilu handles foreclosure defense in Broward and Palm Beach and all 67 Florida counties. Call the law offices of Bilu and Bilu today at 954-596-0669 or visit us on the web at bilulaw.com. That's B-I-L-U-L-A-W.com. That's why I moved here. And we're back. You moved where? Settle down there, okay. cowboy. <laughs> hey, you know, we have got so many shows. We actually, we don't just do a show here in South Florida. We are in Houston, Dallas, San Antonio, Las Vegas, Atlanta. We're everywhere. So we've got so many shows. Not us personally. <laughs> well, but we own we the shows. We don't fly around. But sometimes you run into a sponsor, you just... He's just a great guy, yes. and we just look so forward to doing this show. And you, listen, if you're suffering with making your home payments, you're worried about foreclosure, we being have, up, we've got the doctor. Being upside down. Exactly. Loan modification. Your, right. So what the show is about is so you don't have to go Google somebody, you know, and hope that you, you got the right person. You never want to Google somebody. Because there's so many people that we saw that have a website that say they do foreclosure. They also do immigration law. They do real estate law. They do personal Family law. <laughs> they do everything. everything. Yeah. Welcome Gil B. Lou with B. Lou and B. Lou, who's become also just a good friend of ours too now. Welcome to the show, Gil. Thank you. It's great to be back. Um, it's Friday. Right before the holidays, everything is getting crazy. So, you know, we know what we're in for. We know what to expect. But um, I want to start out, in case I forget later, by wishing everybody out there listening happy holidays. Yes. A great new year. Um, you know, hopefully it'll be a prosperous one. So maybe two years ago you called me for the loan modification, and now you're buying me because you're now you're calling me because it's time to refi or it's time to buy a new place, it's time to sell this place, give us a call. We do a lot of real estate. It's not just about foreclosure, um, although that is a lot of what we do. Um, we're also here to help you when things are going well um, because you need help to keep things in order. You need help when you're acquiring the properties, and that's what we're here to do as well. Uh, you know, it's funny. It, it, you know, for the longest time, everything I did was a short sale. Every closing that I did was a short sale, and I've been closing properties down in Florida now for going on 12 years. Um, and it's just been, you know, phenomenal to, to see these short sales going through. We were able to help a lot of people. It used to be, it used to take a lot of time. It still takes a lot of time. Does it? Oh, it still takes a long time to do. It takes a lot of attention to detail, but we've got a good staff. Uh, we've got great technology and we're on top of it. We get the banks what they want to see. Um, you know, just this week, we actually closed a short sale for, uh, Wait, excuse me. We got to tell everybody oh. if you want to watch the show live right now, go. go to www.belulaw.com. You can actually watch the show right now live. Or if you want or to go if you back, miss something, you, you can go, can go back, back and, and watch, watch the show later. Exactly. So absolutely, and you can you can see my beautiful face <laughs> and the face you're going to see when you want. One of the faces you might see when you come into the office. Or your cousin. Or my cousin. Absolutely. And your yeah. staff is wonderful too. I like them. Yeah. <laughs> we keep them around for some reason. So we do this short sale. We close it now. Now here's the interesting thing: the short sale. The owner of the home had died. Um, so now this is an estate doing a short sale. You're going, well, why is an estate going to do a short sale? They can't come after the guy anymore. He, he's no longer with us. Well, here's the problem is that that debt is a debt of the estate. Um, now, if you don't have anything in your estate, you might not need to worry about it. But if you do, like the situation that we ran into this week, now they're able to clear the debt out of the estate. Um, and, you know, the, those heirs can now take what their, um, <clears throat> what, what, what the testator, what the decedent, wanted them to have what yeah. happens with the deficit with that so you take care of that we as got well. rid of the deficiency as part of the short sale okay so everything was taken care of the house was gone it was sold uh the mortgage was wiped out so the deficiency didn't come back as a claim against the estate and you know whatever this particular decedent had uh was able to go to his family instead of going to 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 the bank that had the mortgage on his property so we were happy to see that happen that was, that was a great thing to see this week tell everybody what the difference is between a short sale and a foreclosure Okay. So because a lot of people question that. 
Okay, so I mean, for me, it sounds basic, right? Yes, but, but, but not you know, for a lot of people. Not, they're not right. knowledge so, knowledgeable. Like myself, hmm. I told you initially, I was not knowledgeable what the difference was. Right. So now you've got a property, you haven't paid the mortgage, or you're not going to be able to pay the mortgage. You say, I want to deal with this. I want to get it off my back. Well, you could sit, 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 uh, sit around and do nothing and let the bank come and try to take the house from you from, in court. Or you can take the proactive step of listing the property for sale. Now, here's the problem. You owe a lot more on the house than it's worth, and that we still have a lot of people in that situation. Well, we contact the bank, and we say, look, we can sell this house. We've got an offer for you know $250,000. We know that you've got a uh, mortgage and that the balance is probably around three eighty, dollars let's say. Um, now, after we pay the realtors, we pay the closing fees, we pay for title insurance, we pay for all the expenses that need to be paid, the past due taxes, whatever it is, we can give you bank $223,418.92, just as an example. Now, we have to submit that to the bank. Um, and now we have to submit some supporting documentation. We have to show, like, this is how much these people make. Um, this is what they have in assets. This is, uh, you know, here's their tax return from last year. Here are their pay stubs. Here are their bank statements. Right. Don't you have to be eligible to do a short sale? Well, we have to get it approved. Right. You know, people are like, I want my short sale. Well, you're not entitled to it. You have to ask for it. Right. Um, we have to negotiate it. And, you know, this is one of the things where we do actually do a little bit more negotiation than we would on, let's say, loan modification. Loan modification, we say we negotiate it because it's a good word. Uh, really, we apply for it. We get it back from the bank and it's take it or leave it in 99% of the 99% of cases, um, you know, with with certain I investors, if they're a small bank, we can work on terms. But generally, if it's come from Bank of America, Chase, Wells Fargo, Aqua, Nation Star, you name them, the big servicers say, look, this is the deal we're offering, take it or leave it. When it comes and what to what happens if you're <clears throat> upside down? Does that I mean, do, when you get the loan modification, does that help with that? Sometimes, um, sometimes it doesn't <clears throat> because again, you know, we're looking at a loan, modifi loan modification, we're looking at keeping the property long term. So if you're upside down now, it doesn't mean you're going to be upside down in 20 years. Right. Property values are appreciating in Florida. There, it goes up, it goes down a little bit, but for the most part, the trend is upwards. So when you're dealing with the loan modification, yes, it would be nice. And a lot of times we do see it where the bank reduces the amount you owe. Um, as part of that modification. Sometimes they say, no, look, you're still going to owe more than the property's worth, but you're going to be paying this loan off now. Uh, we just got a loan modification in today, actually, uh, for one of our clients. And we don't have the permanent in yet. We have the trial in, um, which is the one the bank wants to make sure before they go through all their work of making changes that they need to make um, to make sure that these people are actually going to pay it. Um, these clients are. But what the bank's actually doing is extending the term of the loan over 40 years. Um, and there might be a chance, this is what they're telling us, and we've seen it happen in, in real time before, um, for 30% of their principal balance to be waived. Now, part of that principal balance is now going to include past due payments, taxes that the bank paid, insurance that the, uh, actually the bank didn't pay insurance on this house, but taxes that the bank paid, certain other payments that the bank made, and you know, you, you're the interest that the bank hasn't received in the two plus years that the people haven't paid the mortgage. Well. If you factor all that in, and let's say that raises your principal balance by $100,000, but your principal overall is being reduced by 120, you're still getting money off. But yes. even if that's being put back in and they're only taking off 70 of it, you're still in a much better position than Absolutely. you were in before. Um, and so that's an important thing to see. But getting back to the short sale. So the, the short sale, we're now telling the bank, look, we can sell the property and this is how much money we can get you. Now, sometimes the bank will come back and say, great, we'll take it and we'll release the lien on the property. We'll get rid of the mortgage, but these people still owe us the difference. They still owe us the deficiency. Um, and I know that's the situation that you were caught in, Renee. Yes. Um, well, what we do is when we get that answer back, um, you know, we don't like to take no for an answer. When we come back and we say, well, no, we don't like that. What can you do to get this deficiency waived for us? Sometimes they just go back to the investor that owns the loan. And the investor says, okay, they asked for it, we'll waive the deficiency. Sometimes they'll say, well, you know, the person owes us $85,000. If they come in with 8500 at closing, we'll waive the deficiency for that. Oh, it's still a 90% reduction on your yeah, debt. If you've got the wherewithal to do that, great, we can get it waived. Um, and we're not just talking on your home. We're also talking on investment properties. I have a, a family I'm working with right now that have several investment properties in Florida that are underwater, 
um, not only underwater, but unfortunately they're cash flow negative. What does that mean? That means that they have got a renter in there, but the market rent doesn't support what they have to pay to service their loan. So they're losing, even though they've got money coming in from the renter between, after paying the mortgage they're and paying the association, the expenses. they're not covering the expenses on the property and it's beginning to drain. They're moving into their golden years and they want to keep them golden. So we're now working with the bank on these properties, uh, with the banks on these properties to get them sold, um, have the bank release my client from the deficiency, take less money. And, you know, I think we've got a really good shot on these particular properties. Um, you know, I, I can't really say more than that, but I think we've got a really good shot because of the numbers, the way they work out, the people's assets. It really looks like it's something that's going to work out well for the clients. Um, and if you've got questions about this, because this is really complicated stuff, you know, and every it really situation is. is different, please give us a call at the office, 954-596-0669. Um, you can look us up on the web for more information, www.bilulaw.com. That's B-I-L-U law.com. Our consultations are always free. You can do it in person. We can do a consultation over the phone. I've emailed out retainers. We, we've, I have many clients that I've never actually physically met because really? either they can't get out because they're working or they live in another no, state. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. And we're happy to work with them digitally as well. We're, you know, we, or if you we live do, in Martin County. I mean, you live in Martin County. Absolutely. Just we, call. But, you know, we got to go to break. But when we come back, what I want to talk about is I've learned so much from you, is the people who aren't taking care of business mm -hmm. and what happens because they need to know what they're in store for and why it's important to have someone like Bilu and Bilu representing them because these people who Especially are just for a putting the envelopes yes. in the uh, drawer and just forgetting about because them. Because there are ramifications if it's not addressed properly. All I'm going to tell you, I'm going to save this, I'm going to save the answer when we come back is I gave my client the best Hanukkah present they could ever get. Oh, I Ooh. can't wait to hear that one. Okay, we're going to go to break and we're here with Gil Bilu of Bilu and Bilu foreclosure and you do other areas too real estate and but we want to talk about for those of you who are just putting the envelopes in the drawer and i want to hear about, about the gift yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back <laughs> At the law firm of Bilu and Bilu, we can help you if you are facing foreclosure. Don't lose your home due to foreclosures by the bank or mortgage company. Call the law offices of Bilu and Bilu at 954-596-0669. You have rights and we can help you exercise them. At Bilu and Bilu, your first consultation is always free. If your home is underwater or you are behind on your mortgage and you're confused about what to do, we can help. Call our office today, 954-596-0669 or 1-877-BILU-LAW. That's 1-877-BILU-LAW. At Bilu and Bilu, our lawyers have more than 20 years combined experience in real estate law. The banks have lawyers, and so should you. The lawyers at Bilu and Bilu can help you modify your loan or apply for a short sale while they defend your case in court. Contact the lawyers at Bilu and Bilu today so you can sleep easy tonight. Your home is your castle. Trust the professionals at Bilu and Bilu to defend it for you. The law office of Bilu and Bilu handles foreclosure defense in Broward and Palm Beach and all 67 Florida counties. Call the law offices of Bilu and Bilu today at 954-596-0669 or visit us on the web at bilulaw.com. That's B-I-L-U-L-A-W.com. And we're back. It's one of our favorite shows to do. <laughs> Listen, if you are having problems and you're worried about foreclosure, this is, he can't say this, we can. This is the top firm, not just here in South Florida, all over Florida, when it comes to foreclosure events. And you do not want to handle a foreclosure by yourself. No. So tell people what could happen. Because most people, like I just said to you during break, think that if you do a foreclosure, you're just walking away from your home and that's it, and maybe it affects your credit. Right. But there's so much more. So explain to people what the ramifications okay. of that So is. we're going to go with reverse chronological order. Um, okay. We're going to go with what happened on Thursday, and then I'm going to tell you what happened on Tuesday. Okay, perfect. Um, Thursday morning, uh, actually Wednesday, I got hired by a client. Um, she tried to defend her own foreclosure. The foreclosure was filed, I think, in February of this year, and the sale was set for Thursday. I get hired on Wednesday. 
She oh decided she was going to try to do it herself. She'd try to do loan modification, try to do all these things. Um, bank, bank's attorney, uh, I want to say railroader because that's kind of a very negative connotation, but he was on top of his game. It was a small private lender that had purchased the loan from a big bank. Um, and they, they, I give these guys credit. I actually spoke to these lenders. They're not bad guys. They try to work with her. They're trying to modify it. Can't do it. Um, she just, her income wouldn't support it, whatever the situation is. Well, she comes into me Wednesday. Um, luckily, she was working with another consultant, so I had a full file. I was able to look at everything. And I, I saw some things in the, in the way the, the summary judgment proceeded that might give me the ability to get the judgment vacated, maybe. But there's no way I could put that all together in a couple hours. You know, we got to do our work. So um, we filed an emergency motion to cancel the sale just to ask, to give me a little more time to look at the file. Um, really, I had really almost no legal grounds. I, I will tell you part of this, I was just lucky it was December. Um, the judge was just in a very giving mood. Um, but I went in a motion to cancel the sale that was set for Thursday morning. Uh, it was set for 10 o'clock, 940, I got it canceled. Um, and it was partially my ability to, you know, know how to work within the court system. So you got to get the sale done. canceled. I got the sale canceled. Wow, We're working okay. on getting the judgment vacated. I can't make any promises. Um, I'm, I'm working on I getting the judgment vacated. I feel confident with you. <laughs> right? And look, the woman had filed her own answer um, and, you know, didn't do the, uh, what we call, she didn't raise affirmative defenses. She didn't, I, I use this as an example all the time. Did she tell she you said, why she waited so long? It's complicated. I can't really talk about it, okay. but yeah, it's she just thought she could do it. She thought she knew what she was doing, and she okay. didn't. And she kind of stuck her head in the sand for a little while. And you know, judgment was entered in November with a sale date for December. She didn't even get extra time on the judgment or uh, between the the you know for, for the sale. Um, I, like I said, I got it canceled. And this is uh, this woman is a veteran, a single mom, raising three kids, I believe. And thank God, now they're gonna have a home for the holidays. Um, I don't know what's going to happen after that. We're going to work on it. We're going to see what we can do. There are some situations, look, I, if I don't get involved early, I can't always help you out of the situation. Right. Let me tell you about something that they got, they got, got me early. Right after they got uh, uh, served with the foreclosure suit, they called an attorney that they knew, happens to know me for a long time. She does personal injury. She said, hey, talk to this guy. This is what he does. They come in. They say, look, we've talked to other foreclosure defense attorneys. We can't afford the fees. Um, I said, well, let me see what we got here. And, you know, let me talk to you, get to know you a little bit. I'm not going to tell you that I can work something into your budget, but if there's a way, I'll try. There's something that, that'll work out for both of us. Right, you work in, with people. I worked with them. Then she comes in with her husband. Uh, they have uh, one son who's disabled. They're helping support. They have another daughter in college. And they just, bad luck, they just keep getting laid off of their jobs. They're nice wow. people. They're good folks. And and I said, you know what? Here's what we can do with the price. This is as low. This is... This is where I can go with it. This is, you know, looking at the work I'm going to have to put into your case. You came in early, which gives me a lot of time to spread out your payments. We can work with you at this price. They said, you know, it's a little tight for us, but we can do it. Um, and I will tell you, at one point, they got behind with their payments. They called us, look, one of us lost our jobs again. Um, but we can give you this I, much to try to get the balance yeah. caught up. And you know what? I said, we're going to work with you. We got it caught up. We put them on a payment schedule. You got it worked out. So our first trial, we were set for trial back in August. Um, and we got continued. There just wasn't room on the docket. Now, I will tell you that I was way prepared for this trial. Um, I actually is one of those, I'd have talked about this show on the air, uh, this case on the air before. I actually had proof that the bank did not own the loan. The bank that was suing did not own the loan when they filed the lawsuit, which is a winner in Florida. Now, usually I'm at the opposite end of that. Usually saying, well, the bank can't prove it, but I can't prove that they didn't. And, you know, it's still their burden to prove it. Well, here, I had the proof that they couldn't. Anyway, we get continued in August over my objection because the case was relatively young. There are older cases on the dock. I said, look, I don't have time to get to your case today. Because, you know, you understand, Broward County, between the mornings and afternoons, I've seen 300 trials scheduled for one day. Wow. Right. Well, so you go there and they end up we go rescheduling there. it? They, they reschedule us back to October. We go back to court in October. And I had a good attorney on the other side. She knew what she was doing. I give her a lot of credit. She's a, a nice person outside of the courtroom, an excellent attorney inside the courtroom. I was looking forward to a good challenge. So now we go to court. Um, and we actually started the trial back in October. Um, and there was a little problem with some of the evidence they tried to present. They didn't disclose it to me. I, I wasn't... Uh, I'm not one of those zealots who's going to say they were trying to, to pull the wool over my eyes. Like, they're busy. You know, when I have one trial, they have 50. 
So I understand. They, they sent me the wrong copy of something, and I said, wait, I've never seen this in the middle of the trial. Uh, the judge, I thought the judge should have just not let, let it in, and I would have won the case right there. But the judge said, no, we're going to give him 30 days. You have time to review it, to depose another witness if you want. Do whatever you want. I said, okay, we'll continue. Like, I'm, I'm, I, I, know, I know when the ruling is what it is, right? So now I'm way overprepared. I'm way pre- I say over- I'm prepared for this. I know I've got about three different ways that I think I can win a trial. But it's going to depend on what the judge is going to listen to, right? So now we go back for the trial on Tuesday. I go in. Um, and, you know, I tell my client knew when the continued date was, and she knew what I was doing. I even sent her the transcript from the first part of the trial. I said, I've got direct testimony from the plaintiff's witness that they didn't, uh, <laughs> that, that, that says that it's a different entity that owns the loan than the one that's suing. So I've got that in my back pocket anyway. I've got these assignments of mortgage that show that, the, that this particular trust that owned the loan, that said it owned the loan, didn't actually come into ownership until after the, after the lawsuit filed, was filed. In Florida, that wins the case. That's not the same in every state. Florida, that wins the case. Now we're going through and we're back at trial. I made even made sure that the bank was bringing back the same witness because I loved his testimony so much before. We go in, we're ready. Um, my partner actually came in and audited the trial. He wanted to sit in just to give me some constructive advice. It's great. We sit, we, we watch each other. And we, you know, tell each other, look, this is what you did great. This is what you can improve on because you can always improve. So now I'm going and I'm ready and I kind of know where we're going with this. And the bank's note gets in. I said, okay, no problem. Now she starts asking him questions about the mortgage and I'm listening to her questions. And I'm like, okay, this is, this is interesting. I'm going to have my chance to voir dire this witness, to ask this witness questions about the mortgage before it's actually admitted as evidence in trial. Well, what happened? After three continuances, they don't have the original mortgage. You need the original mortgage as evidence to bring in a trial, or so if you don't happens? have it, well, or if you don't have it, you need to bring in a certified copy of the mortgage. Now, I know this, why? Because I don't have those original assignments of mortgage that I'm relying on. I went to public records, I spent the $6, I got the assignments of mortgage that I needed for my trial. I was prepared. I needed a certified copy. I need something from the Broward County clerk saying, this was recorded, this is a real copy of what was recorded. So they come and she goes, I wanted to make a copy of the mortgage. I'm like, copy? You know, it's almost, uh, uh, you know, in my head I'm going, what, what, what? You know, <laughs> I'm going, unbelievable. I'm like, wait a second, is you just say a copy of the mortgage? She goes, yeah. She says, is that a certified copy of the mortgage? She goes, no. no. I'm like, well, I'm objecting to it coming in. And the magistrate, of course, turns to me and says, why? Uh, it, it, uh, we were in front of the magistrate instead of a judge. Long story. Not going to get into that. I go, well, under the best evidence rule, uh, Florida statute 90.902, I'm going to go, I think it was subsection four that I was looking at. It's off of memory. If you're bringing in evidence of a lien on property, it needs to either be the original document, the original recorded document you get back from the recording office, or it needs to be a certified copy. I said, this is neither. She goes, well, I can bring this in as a business record. Well, you can't bring this in as a business record. It, it's not, uh, it's, it falls under what's called hearsay. Um, it's an out of court statement. I'm gonna give a little, little legal lecture here. It's an out of court statement, writing's a statement, used to prove the truth of the matter asserted. You're trying to say that this is recorded in the public records and it's a lien on this property, but you don't have the original with the recording information on it and you don't have a certified copy from the clerk. So for all I know, for all the court knows, you could have gone and typed in recording information or taken it off another document. Exactly. They didn't. Right. Happened to be a real copy. Um, uh, But it actually says right on it because she printed it out off the internet, this is not a certified copy. Wow. (laughs) At least it can't get any better. I'm going, oh. Bingo. It's like bingo. Well, she started to argue and and she goes, and the the judge goes up, I'm not letting this in. It's not evidence. Well, now I've just taken the wind completely out of her sails. There's that's her whole that's wonderful, but that's unbelievable. That's, well, it's not unbelievable. What, what's my point? It's one thing to be prepared with evidence. It's another thing to know the rules. And when it comes to foreclosure defense, you really got to do both. This is why you have to go to Gil. <laughs> but look because how really, late she was coming in. Right. I, I, you, and I, look what you've discovered yeah. in a short period of time. Right. Well, and then that, it was thinking on my feet. It really, like, she comes in, and it's not, I'm not expecting her not to have it. I thought they had the original. They, on their witness, on their exhibit list, the, the list they file with the court, says what they're bringing as evidence, original mortgage. Okay, no problem. You know, every time that we have our show each month with Gil, he 
finds, whether he's litigating or if you're finding stuff, this is a difference between hiring someone that does this day in and day mm-hmm. out versus someone that maybe does it a couple times a month. Yeah. And you know what? And this I, is why he's so knowledgeable oh wait, because those this judges is, have this to is his know expertise. Who you are too. Yes, they oh, do. They do. <laughs> of course, they do. But wait, now I have to tell you about the Hanukkah present. So now trial's over. The the, the bank says, "Look, there's nothing I can do. I'm going to voluntarily dismiss the case. Nothing. They, they, they can't win, right? So they say we're going to dismiss the case. Means they're going to try again at some point, whatever it is. Um, now I call my client from I literally. I, I have my little ritual after I win. I go downstairs. Uh, I ran into another attorney I know. We're talking. Sorry, I got to call my client. So I'm standing in front of the courthouse. I call my client up. She's driving home, right? And you shouldn't be answering the phone while you're driving, but she did. Uh, we all did. And I tell her that she <laughs> won, right? And I tell her that we won. And she goes, you have no idea how good this news is. I go, well, you, what do you mean? She's like, I just got laid off yesterday. Oh, oh wow. So I'm like, I'm not happy that she got laid off. But no, now, no, but wait. What, what a weight off her shoulders. Yes. Like, if I would have lost, I probably couldn't. I probably could have gotten 90, maybe 120 days on a sale date. Not the, you know, like not the worst result. It's but that's not the end case. of it, though, right? I mean, that's that's great news. That is a gift, but I'm just saying that's it's not, not the end of it. But it probably, it's not. The bank is eventually, at some point, probably going to refile the suit. It's a nice house. Um, but now that she's unemployed, they're living on one income, they don't have to worry about finding a new place to live right now. And that, Which is that, more than anything that's else. Is Give everybody your phone number. 954-596-0669. If you're calling from out of state, don't want to use a long distance. 877 uh, Law, um, And you can find us on the web, www.belulaw.com. Uh, and follow me on Twitter, at GBLU. I will, if you live tweet me the day of the show, I will answer your question on the air. I promise, or I promise to try at least. Um, you can find us. Um, I know you said you don't like Google, but we're up there on Google. You'll see we've got good reviews. I think people like us. We love having you. Yes, on. absolutely. He'll be back with us again next month. We love Belu and Belu. Hey, thanks for coming in. Thanks, Gil. We will see you again next month. Absolutely. I'll see you next year. Yes. yes. Happy holidays to everybody out there. Happy and healthy. <laughs> Belu and Belu Law. We will be. Uh, we'll see you again on Monday. Yes, we will. Peace and love, everybody. We're out. Thanks for tuning in today to the Ask the Experts show with Steve-O and Renee. Tune in every Friday from 4 to 5 p.m. while some of the top local experts in their field from Broward and Palm Beach counties educate you in the areas of law, health, financial, and home improvement. You can also call our offices at 888-574-6999 to become an expert on our show. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program